here on the southern tip of Baja, Mexico, swimming, windsurfing, and other water sports are popular here in the Sea of Cortez. And you, usually the only gross, disgusting thing you can step on is a dead fish, but those are easily avoided. But recently, a new, strange, disgusting creature has appeared, a jelly-like thing called the Salp. 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 We first discovered them when me and my brother were out boogie boarding, as shown in this clip, but we didn't notice them yet. But then, when the water had calmed down a bit... Ew, what are all these jelly things? Those weird jelly things are called salt. Salt is a form of tunicate. A tunicate, if you are wondering, is an underwater sac-like filter feeder. Most tunicates live on the ocean floor, but a few, including salt, float up to the surface as adults. Salp can be found in temperate equatorial and cold seas, although you can find the most salps in the southern ocean, near Antarctica. Here, they are sometimes more abundant than krill. Salp also appear to be a species on the rise. That means their population is increasing every day. They can be found singly, by themselves, or in large chain-like colonies. They call it a colony that, like they would call a group of fish a school. So a gaggle of geese, a school of fish, and a colony of salp. But um, Salp go through two main stages in life. The first one is this. When a baby salp is ready to leave its parent, it separates itself from the parent's body wall, aka the jelly on the outside thus becoming an oozoid and entering the solitary phase. In this phase of life, the oozoids eat the pythoplankton they can and reproduce asexually to advance to their next stage of life. Salps reproduce asexually in the solitary period. You probably already know what that means, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. When the salp gets big enough, it concentrates really hard and POP! Out comes another salp. And they do this over and over and over again until there's a huge chain of salps. After the salp colony becomes big enough, the oozoids become blastozoids. The chain of blastozoids stay together while swimming and feeding, and basically everything else. In this stage of life called the aggregate stage, the blastozoids mature as females originally, then later on turn into males. Thus, in the aggregate stage, salps reproduce sexually, and there is no need to tell you how that works. So the females are fertilized by the males, and once their baby oozoids head off to the solitary stage, they become males and do the opposite side of the job on the new females. Salps usually die when they fill up too much on pythoplankton, get clogged, and sink to the bottom. Dead, of course. And that is the end of the salp lifespan. Salps have a huge effect on their underwater ecosystem. Not only do they keep the pythoplankton at bay, but when they die, they also give it nutrients to live. Also, when they die, they bring carbon down to the bottom and help feed the biological pump. The biological pump transports carbon all over the ocean and into the air. Also, changes in the salps' numbers and distribution affects the carbon cycle and possibly can affect climate change. Fun fact! Although salp look and feel a lot like jellyfish, they're actually more closely related to vertebrates or animals with backbones. That means salp are more closely related to humans than jellyfish. Whoa! Although we really don't know how much salp we really have in our oceans, a university in Ohio has set up a website for salp sightings. This will help to track the location of these large masses of salp. We have, we have reported our sightings down to the exact location using a GPS. If you want to learn more about salp, visit this website. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>